All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. And today I am joined by Ronan Leonard, who's in lovely Melbourne, Australia. How are you doing, Ronan? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, and Ronan is the mastermind guy. He's the one who helps uh, helps entrepreneurs and people like really get their businesses on track. And what we wanted to talk about today was this whole concept of it starts with you and how to overcome self-limiting beliefs, etc. So, just uh, uh, stepping back for a moment, um, Ronan, how did you how did you end up as the mastermind guy? <laughs> Very long story, yeah. actually. Uh, when I was 23, I worked on a cruise ship that sunk off the wild coast of South Africa. Oh, wow. And, and I was one of the lowest paid people on the ship. I worked in the gift shop. And most of the senior officers and crew left and abandoned us, which was the entertainers and, and people that really weren't supposed to be doing that um, to help coordinate the rescue. And I did another nine years on cruise ships, traveled the world, had an amazing time, and then started my own events business based around casinos, which is what I got into after that. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I realized that I want to do something different for the next phase of my life because we're not defined by a single career anymore. Mm -hmm. we, we have multiple careers. And I looked at all my unique skills and one of them was back on the cruise ship. Well, what am I good at? I'm good at helping people. And I love seeing that light bulb moment when you teach somebody or somebody else teaches them in that mastermind concept and they go, wow, I've got it. That's amazing. That's something I can use again and again and again. So that's the the idea. And I did my very first mastermind. I got into quite late at life, four years ago, in my very first mastermind. And the second I was in one, I went, wow, this is what I'm missing. I want to do more of this. I just want to do more of this. So that's how I became the mastermind guy. Excellent. And so for people who don't know what mastermind is, can you explain it? Yes, the concept is that when you come together, and it's based on a, a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which is still, it is 80 years old and still going really strong today. A lot of entrepreneurs read it. And the idea is that when two or more people come together, you create this super mind, a mastermind. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that very small business owners, they bump up against what they don't know all the time. And, and that's happening more and more these days because the innovation, disruption, yeah. you know, things have changed so much quicker. So you just can't learn everything quickly enough right so when you join together with other people in in, in groups you get to to, to learn everyone's skill set and you come up with a better idea than you did on your own and it's mm. one of the reasons that co-founders do so well mm -hmm. not because there's two of them but because they get to bounce around an idea and say what about if you did that and and they shape an idea from a good idea into a great idea or they also bury bad ideas a lot sooner than solopreneurs that think, <laughs> I've got this great idea, and they spend months and months on it, only to realize that they hadn't really tested their assumptions. Yeah, because it's really tough, isn't it? Especially if somebody decides, you know, that they want to start their own business, they want to be an entrepreneur or whatever. And it sounds great, but there's that kind of moment when suddenly, you know, maybe they rented an office, maybe they're doing it in their basement, whatever. There's that sudden moment when they're staring at, you know, their four walls the table the computer maybe their phone and going what do i do next right yeah and yeah. i guess it's it's that it's that time when people really need the help to kind of organize themselves right yeah one of my one of my great sayings is that 99 percent of your problems have already been solved it's just that you don't know you don't know it so you need to find someone that that, that has that mm -hmm. that information already for you so absolutely, reaching that point, it's the Peter principle in, in reverse. So you, you know the, the saying that yeah. in, in a corporation, you eventually get promoted to your level of incompetency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the same thing in small business, you don't even have that support team around you. So if you're a really good technician, but not a good marketer, there's a huge amount of marketing you don't know, and, and which is stopping you from really hitting your straps and, and finding you know your next level of growth or ideas that will really accelerate your business. And there's nothing wrong with that. The best part is to, to admit it. Okay, I don't mm. know everything. Let me surround with people that, that know what I don't. I can help them in different areas and we can collaborate and we can share ideas, knowledge and, and grow together. So what's the concept of, you call it uh, accountability? What's the concept behind that? Well, uh, there's two sides of the coin. One of them is, is experts who are then stuck in a rut in delivering their mm -hmm. ideas in just one format. Um, so cooks, chefs just cook, um, trainers just train. And the idea is innovation is all around them almost running their own mastermind, downloading their intellectual property, teaching other people that shortcut. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is is entrepreneurs coming together in a mastermind um, to work towards an improvement of their business. To say, okay, well, look, 
over the next 13 weeks or over the next six months, I'm going to be part of a mastermind and I'm going to, I'm going to shine some light in what I don't know and my dark spots and, and get people to help me to, to understand where I should be going or where I could be going and those possibilities. So they're the two sides of the, the mastermind concept. Mm. So what are some of the, um, so, okay, so take, uh, take the first side for a moment for, for somebody who is an expert or whatever, um, what, what's, what's in it for them? What do they get back out of this kind of process? Well, effectively, they get to learn far more than they, they actually know. So there's always three levels of business. There's there's imitation. When you first start a business, you tend to just copy someone else. Mm-hmm. You might be a copywriter and you go, okay, I'm doing what everyone else does. Then you reach mastery and you go, look, I'm really good at this. You know, I've, I've honed my craft. And then finally, it's innovation. Okay, so I know what I know now. What else do I do? So one of the best ways to do that is a lot of people sort of dump straight into a course and they dump their IP down and hope that people want to learn that. But a mastermind is almost a proof of concept before a, a course because you get to speak to your potential customers and say, mm. what do you really want to know? And, mm. and it can be quite dynamic where you, you ask questions about your audience and they say, look, I really want to know how to do this. Okay, let me teach you in its mastermind. So you get a chance to also learn from your audience because you want to be a learn-it-all, not a know-it-all. Right. And, the second, and the second you have even that mastery and you say, look, I know it all now, I'm an expert – that's the day that you get disrupted and, and you stop learning and people sort of come and overtake you and come up with something else. Mm-hmm. So it's around, you know, constant, constant learning. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the dramatic breakthroughs that you've seen people achieve when they come into a, a, an environment like this as opposed to just kind of, you know, soldiering on on their own? One of the biggest things they tend to learn is that everybody has the same fears, frustrations, problems, and doubts as them. And they think it's just them. Mm -hmm. Just think, oh, look, I'm not smart enough, or um, this is really hard. And then they get into a room together and people go, actually, I thought the same thing, or the same issues. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of it is around pricing. A lot of people are really uncomfortable with talking about pricing or charging really what they're worth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had one mastermind group earlier this year and, and we were talking about it over a couple of months and it turned out that half the group put their prices up from being the mastermind because people would turn around and say, what you do is amazing. You know, they, they would they would go off and have little accountability buddies. Mm-hmm. They would help each other, say, look, I can help you with um, pay-per-click because this is my expertise or I can help you with branding. That's what I do. And then most geniuses or most really good business owners dismiss what they do. They go, oh, yeah, that, that's just what I do. Right. And it's only when, to them, it's not, it's not that special. But for people that don't have that skill, they go, that's amazing what you do. <laughs> so it's, it's improving their confidence. So actually, you should be charging what you're worth. You're really good at this um, and you're undercharging. So it's a, it's a way of getting that, that independent sounding board and improving your confidence and prices. Yeah, and that's a great example because I do think, um, you know, I think most people probably undervalue their their expertise. And I know that when people get into, um, you know, especially because there's a lot more people maybe going out on their own as consultants nowadays, right? That's a There's a huge yeah. trend to that. And I think that's one of the first things that they struggle with. It's like, you know, I'm kind of nervous about saying that I'm, my rate is $300 an hour or whatever, because that just seems really, really high. But then, as you say, you've got this wealth of experience. And if you aren't confident to charge it, then people aren't really going to value what you deliver. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it really has to go. And that's down to sort of, sort of mindset. Um, and you, you could have, you know, an MBA, you could have a decade's worth of experience. And then you go out to the market and, and you underprice yourself. Because mm-hmm. what most people do when they start out, they look at what everyone else is charging and they stick themselves right in the middle. Right. And nobody wants average, or they're a little <laughs> bit below. They say, look, oh, I'm just starting out. I'll go a little bit lower. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants average. They either want the really cheap or they want the really expensive. <laughs> so you priced yourself into the most competitive part, um, accidentally almost, because mm-hmm. you know when you set up a business model, nobody ever says you, right, you really need to look at your pricing, your positioning. They talk about you know revenue. They'll talk about uh, all those are things, but h- hardly anyone at the very start in your business model and your plan, there's never a thing to say, right, where are you going to position yourself in, in the market from from the from the first off? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, so it's fascinating to me that that happens. Yeah. So what are some of the other things that you see uh, when people come into a situation like that? What are some of the other great kind of aha moments they get? 
I, it's really, it really is around sort of mindset. I, I, I keep going back to this, and mm-hmm. it's a bit of a woo-woo word, but, but ultimately, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're turning over two hundred grand a year or a million dollars or five. You're always going to have those growing points and those yeah. pain points, and you're always going to bump up against that ceiling. Um, so finding people that have either really recently just done what you've done is a far better solution than for my for my personal thing is everyone wants to follow Gary V or Richard Branson and they mm-hmm. seem to think that these guys have all the answers and if I had an hour in the room with them I I know everything. Um, you know that's rubbish. Most of these people have nothing to do with small business. Um, Gary V, you know, pitches to Coca Cola. Right. Although his content although his content, you know, everyone that's in small business go, oh, this is great, you know, do seventy hours and mm-hmm. uh, you know, all this all this excitement around there. Gary V's not there the next morning when you've got to get up and do your 12 hour shift and, mm-hmm. and, and trying to figure your stuff out. So you really want to look around people that have probably just done what you've done the last year or two, because it's fresh, it's relevant, and it's applicable to you. And if you can create any kind of relationship or even a mastermind with them, you go, okay, they've just done that. I want to get there. Can you, can I help you? And can you help me get to that next level? And, and and look to always be leveling up. Right. And that's that's a great point because I do think that often people um you know when they start out on their own or when they when they start a business or whatever they do look at these hugely successful people and they say you know and which is fine I want to be like that but as you say the steps to getting there you're probably better off um working with people who are have, have experiencing today what you're experiencing. Yeah, the, the the gap is so big. It's like I say in the mastermind, there, there needs to be a, a plus minus equal. You want people that are a little bit ahead of you. You want people that are your peers. And there's people that need to be a little bit below you in certain aspects so that you're all learning. But if the gap's too big, there's no value exchange whatsoever. So so yeah, I, I, I firmly believe that there isn't that much that they can teach you apart from uh, this is what you could potentially end up being, but the gaps between between there, there's a long road, and and for a lot of people, you know, it's a decade, fifteen years to get there. Well, yeah, and I mean, you take Richard Branson or something, and then you go, you look back at the very beginning, you think there was not just, you know, obviously he, you know, a brilliant man, but but there were circumstances at play there as well that may not be at play for you, right? So yeah, you might exactly. want to you might want to look at something different. So what are um so what have you seen? Can you give examples of where you've seen some um you know people have major breakthroughs and what's that that has led to in terms of success in their businesses? Yeah, I've seen several people we tend to follow the wrong goals. I I I've noticed uh, more and more often that people set a goal and then the following week they haven't done it. And that they haven't really stepped back and taken the time to go, okay, what is my overall goal? And then what's the habit and ritual I need to break down to to achieve that? So if your goal is to double your sales in the next 12 months, okay, well, that's great. That's that's, that's fine. But you need to step that down into to an actionable step and 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 really break it down to the to the habits. And and I've had several people in masterminds where they've um, set a goal and then realized a couple of months in that it's not really what they want. It just sounded like they needed to be busy. So a couple of times I've really just narrowed them down and said, okay, let's let's make achievable smart goals and let's work on something that that gets you a success um, versus a failure. Um, and I'll give you a great analogy is that two sporting teams, right, they, they play off against each other. At the end of the week, they might lose by a kick or a point or whatever the scoring thing is, like really close. The team that wins spends the next week on a high. You know, we're great, we're brilliant. The team that lost by, you know, possibly sometimes even an unfair circumstance that could have gone either way, spends the week thinking that they're losers and and they're down on themselves. Um, So setting yourself up for success almost on a weekly basis and looking at, okay, here's the wins I did for the week. I I did all these things rather than looking at your to-do list and going, I didn't do all these things can often be the shift between gaining that momentum. Look, I'm winning. I'm, every week I've I've achieved this instead of looking at all the negatives, all the things you've got to do. And I've seen people use that tactic and, you know, hit their 50% revenue in six months or whatever they, their goal is because they've just been a bit more focused on, on A, the wins and be a bit more narrow about exactly what they want to achieve. 
Well, and and I think that's an excellent point because obviously, you know, for people who are on their own or starting their businesses or whatever, it's you're going to have a lot of setbacks. You're going to have a lot of obstacles. You're going to, you know, have a lot of rejections or whatever. And it's very easy to that just become a cycle, right? And and as you talk about mindset, I mean, that's easy to destroy your your mindset. So you have to pick out some positives to keep yourself moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Motivation is 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 nothing to do with Tony Robbins fire walking those sorts of things. That's you know that just doesn't work. Um, you know that lasts for most people. You know an hour a day or week after they've been to see him, your real motivation comes from your intrinsic values and your why. And and when you can drill into that, that will get you through those tough days. Why am I doing this? And if you can be a bit more, you can be more clarity around there, a bit more purpose, a bit more thinking time around really what are you doing and what are your goals and why that helps you through those tough roads. So you said, when you get rejection after rejection uh, and sales is, you know, a brutal business for a lot of people. <laughs> so you've got to have that deeper motivation. Why am I doing this? And it's seldom just about the the dollars at the end. Yeah. And, and just the, the last point uh, uh, before we end here is, is, is that one of the things that you see that a lot of people miss out on is that they don't really know why they're doing it. I mean, they have a, they say, yeah, you know, I want to have my own business. I want to be my own boss. I want to build this business forever, but not, but don't go down a whole lot deeper than that. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's something that, that, that I teach and something that I preach and something that I practice because yeah, there will be days when, um, you know, you, your whole system goes down or you lose a major client or whatever, whatever that reason is. And, and if you don't have something deeper than, I'm in this just to make money. And some people that's enough of a motivation for them. For the majority mm -hmm. of us, it's not. It's not the reason. You know, we want to build something good. We want to build something great. But if you spend that extra time to drill into your your real purpose, your real intrinsic values, who do you want to be business? What's your ideal customer look like? You know, what's what's your purpose? And and stay on that path for the longer haul then that's when you'll achieve, um, I don't like to use the word success too much, but that's when you'll, you'll achieve more fulfillment and you'll feel better about what you're doing and, and you'll push through those dark days when you'll feel like giving up. Yeah, and I think that's a great point to end on because let's face it, I mean, if you're in business on your own, even if you're just a, a single salesperson, um, you know, you're going to have plenty of dark days. So you need something to push yourself through to the light to those days that are light days. Um, so listen, before we go, Ronan, do you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and then uh, how they can learn more about you? Sure. Well, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So I'm Ronan Leonard, the mastermind guy. Uh, as you said, John, I help people that either want to download their intellectual property in some kind of mastermind and teach others and share what they have and create that sort of thought leadership mm -hmm. style. Or I also help people that just want a bit more clarity around what they want to do and how they can set some smarter goals, a bit more accountability in their life. 